The MCAT Podcast, session number 89. A collaboration between the medical school headquarters and Next Step Test Prep. The MCAT Podcast is here to make sure you have the information you need to succeed on your MCAT test day. We all know that the MCAT is one of the biggest hurdles you'll face as a pre-med, and we're here to give you the motivation and information that you need to know to help get you the score you deserve so you can one day call yourself a medical student. Welcome to the MCAT Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week, along with Brian Snedeker from Next Step Test Prep. This week, we're continuing our physics series. Last week, we covered springs. This week, we're covering water. Apparently, a lot of students don't like water equations with physics. So let's jump in and talk water. All right, Brian, last week, we started off with our first round of physics questions. This week, more questions from the Next Step Q Bank of fun that I will call it. I got destroyed last week. Don't know any of the physics anymore, so I'm assuming this week will be the same. So remind students, these questions are taken from the Q Bank. How do students get access to the Next Step Q Bank? Yep. So we sell the Q Bank either. It's obviously bundled with the course, right? You sign up for the Next Step class and you get all the resources, including the Q Bank. You can purchase the Q Bank separately just as a single $50 purchase. Um, but I would actually recommend if you want to get the, the best value, uh, if you purchase the 10 pack of full lengths for two forty nine, dollars we actually throw the Q Bank in for free as well. So that ends up being a really great deal. So for $250, you're getting 10 full lengths, like $25 a test is literally the best deal you can buy anywhere. Um, and the Q Bank has the equivalent of essentially two more full MCATs worth with something like more than that, almost three full MCATs worth 120 something passages, a thousand discrete questions, tons and tons of stuff. If you, if you pick it up. All right. Awesome. All right. So as always, this handout could be found or can be found at the MCAT podcast.com. Go to session 89. You can download the handout to follow along. So question 11 here, a foam life raft, has a density of 491 kilograms per meter cubed. When placed in a pool of pure water, what percentage of the raft's volume will be above the surface of liquid? 4.91%, 49.1%, 50.9%, or D, none, the raft will be entirely submerged? Hmm. You know, it's funny... When I when I look at this, the the immediate thing that jumps into my mind, obviously, first is I have no clue because I don't remember physics. But mm-hmm. then the answers are so close to each other that I'm just mm-hmm. like, it's got to be D. There, there's something here that's just telling me it's D. <laughs> None. Sure, it's gonna enough. be. It's Would, gonna sink. <laughs> what wouldn't it wouldn't be much of a foam life raft <laughs> if it would sink? Um, you know, although it's funny. It, you always have to follow the math to where it leads you. But at the same time, the MCAT is very much a test that's grounded in reality, real science, the real world, right? And um, uh, that's what science is, right? It's the investigation of the real world. Are you saying so there's no flat earth questions on the MCAT? No flat earth questions, uh, believe it or not. You right. you know, there's no, you won't be investigating the four humors of the body. <laughs> you will be expected to know the germ theory of disease, Um so something like this, you can be pretty sure that it's going to float, right? It's going to be A, B, or C. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's funny you said that, Ryan, the, the the array of answer choices. My first thought was, well, if they're giving you 4.91 and 49.1, like that sounds like th- that's a really strong clue that it's not D, right? That like they're expecting you to mess up by a factor of 10 in there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. a good way to look at the answers. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a little bit of outside knowledge you need here, right? So you have to walk into the test knowing the density of water. Uh, and water's uh, density is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, which it sounds a little odd when you say it, but I think people don't realize how big a cubic meter is. Right, you've actually sketched out a cubic meter. It would be enormous. This an enormous box, you know, three feet on a side. And if you filled that entire thing with water, you wouldn't even. You'd barely be able to shove it along the ground with several people. Yeah. Right. It's in, it, very, very heavy. A thousand kilograms per cubic meter. 
And this life raft only has a density of 491 kilograms per cubic meter. Okay. So it's a little less than half as dense. Yeah. As so when you put it in water, it's going to float. Yep. Of and course. yep. <laughs> and so the simple rule of thumb is if you take the density of an object and divide it by the density of the fluid, that ratio is going to give you the percentage that will sink into the fluid. I'm going to say that one more time because this is – students uh, – Ryan, j just a, a little side note here. You said you hated springs when we were doing the last one. So I was like, let me find something even more hateable. And <laughs> students seem to hate water. They seem to hate floating. They seem to hate – I don't know why. So I was like, all right, let's do that for this one then. Let's do fluids. Um, and there's just simple rules of thumb though that can really make the MCAT much more manageable. So the simple rule of thumb about floating. Take the density of the object over the density of the fluid. That ratio will give you the percent of the object that sinks down into the fluid. Okay. And so the, for the example, key there is sinks down because the question here is what's above. Oh, yeah. And I was going to get to that. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the question is the other way. Right. Um, and, and just a couple of quick, like, you know, mental examples. Think of like a pool noodle, a very light, you know, this kind of foam thing barely sinks into water at all. And if you said, well, it has a density that's 5% of water, you know, a density of um, 50 kilograms per meter cubed and water has a density of a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. So it's 5% the density of water. So only 5% of it sinks down into the water. And you think of an actual pool toy and it really does seem to rest right on the top of the water. Whereas if something has a, at a density of like 97% of water, well, it would almost entirely sink. 97% would sink in. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, 491 over 1,000. So 49.1. Yeah. And that's how much would sink. But then, Ryan, you, you were pointing out what? That the question is asking what will be above the surface. So... If a student is is trying to go too fast through this section, they may go, oh, 49.1, 49.1%. Exactly. Whereas the answer should be 50.9 is emerging above the water. Correct. There you go. Always read the questions. Mm -hmm. Ans the way I say it is answer the question they actually asked you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think I have said that sentence. Answer the question they actually asked you. I'm going to say conservatively tens of thousands of times in my career. <laughs> you should you should have a little soundboard set up on your computer and just record yourself saying the most common things, and that way you'll save your voice. Just press the button that corresponds to the, the clip yeah. that you want to play. Just, just keep jamming the button over and over again. And <laughs> an answer, the, an, an, answer the question they actually asked you. An, an, answer the question. Answer the question they actually asked you. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to save that clip for later, yeah. and we'll we'll use it for something. You'll embarrass me with something <laughs> there. Uh, okay, so ne next question. A variety of experiments are being conducted in a large tank containing an ideal fluid. A spherical object with a volume of 0.84 cubic meters and a specific gravity of exactly 1.05, which is true. A, the object will rapidly sink beneath the surface of the fluid until it reaches the bottom of the tank. B, the object will sink beneath the surface, but will not hit the bottom. C, at least part of the object will project above the surface of the fluid. Or D, not enough information available to answer. So you need to know some, some key things here. First, we need to know what an ideal fluid is. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then... But, and and, and I'll say even further, you need to know what this ideal fluid is. Yeah. Okay. Because right? it just said ideal fluid. Uh, and we don't know the density of that. Yeah, we don't know the fluid. density, right? Is it water? Is it ethanol? Is it mercury? Okay. Right? Yeah. So the rule for floating, because that, that's really all the answer choices are asking you, right? Will you sink to the bottom? Will you sink but not hit the bottom? Will you float? Don't know. I mean, those are the choices. The rule for floating is simple. If you have a density greater than the fluid, you sink. If you have a density less than the fluid, you float. And if you have a density equal to the fluid, you just stay wherever you are right now. Um, or, or rather, you keep moving with whatever your current velocity is. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so this tells us the object has a specific gravity of 1.05, but it doesn't tell us the specific gravity of the fluid. Yeah. So in this case, who knows? It's got to be D. Okay. I would like yeah. this question. Easy one. I don't have to do any work. I don't know enough. Yep. There you go. Okay. Question 13. A sample of deionized water is kept in a cylind uh, cylindrical beaker with a radius of 4 centimeters and a height of 10 centimeters. The density of the water is closest to A, 5.024 times 10 to the negative fourth kilograms per cubic meter, B, 1 kilogram per cubic meter, C, 502.4 grams per cubic meter, or D, 1,000 grams per liter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I picked this question for us to look at just to make a general point that you want to remember that uh, on the MCAT, certainly in the passage and even in the questions, there can be extra information. In fact, there can be lots of extra information. In this case, the question was, what's the density of water? Oh, that was it. Yeah, what's the density this, what's of water? The density of, who cares what it's in? Yeah. If it's in a beaker, if it's in a cup, if it's in the ocean, if it's, you know, Sam I am doesn't care. <laughs> the density of water is what it is. Yep. Wherever it is. And so the uh, the density we had talked about a, a couple of questions ago was 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Mm -hmm. The other densities you have to know, the other way of expressing that same notion is one gram per cubic centimeter, gram per cubic centimeter, one gram per milliliter, or one kilogram per liter. So d the, the density of water is often described as one because it's one in three different unit analysis, gram per cubic centimeter, gram per mil, kilogram per liter, um, or it's a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, in this case, the answer choice D said a thousand grams per liter, and that's a thousand grams is just one kilogram. So that's it. So one kilogram per liter. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's awesome. We we have one thing. We need to know multiple things about that one thing. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. All, well, you had to answer the question. Only required one thing that you know the density of water, yeah. and then it gave you a whole bunch of extraneous info about the uh, graduated cylinder that it was in, mm -hmm. uh, or the beaker that it was in. Yeah, but yeah, we had to know multiple representations of the density of water. That's awesome. I love science. Make me learn so many different things, and then of course the MCAT question writers that that uh, take advantage of that. Right, end up making it get all twisted around, you know. All right, so there you have it. Again, episode two of our physics series with Brian from Next Step Test Prep. If you are looking for full-length practice exams, go to nextsteptestprep.com. Sign up for a free diagnostic. When you do that, you also get one free full-length. They also have other full-lengths that you can purchase and time and time again, students tell me that the full-length exams from Next Step are the best exams out there other than the double AMC exams. So you can sign up for four, six, or 10 exams through Next Step Test Prep and save 10% using the promo code MCATPOD. That's M-C-A-T-P-O-D. And when you use that code, I actually don't get any commission or any kickback uh, on that. It's just a code for you to save some money. So I thought that I'd throw that out there. I hope you have a great week. I'll see you next time here on the MCAT Podcast. Oh.